I got to that stage, and of course that's unrealistic because I've simply got the bank, the firms borrowing money but doing nothing with it. So what they're going to do in this model is hire workers. Get the workers to work in factories, and I'm assuming the factories are there at the moment. I haven't yet modelled building the factories and so on. I'll add that later. But they're going to, of course, in that case, have to pay wages to workers to get workers to work in those factories. So there's now going to be wages. And that's going to be a transfer from the firm's account. Pardon me, the, the program unfortunately resorts columns. I don't want it to do that. I want it to be a case of saying assets minus liabilities equals equity, which is the basic equation of accounting. Uh, it's just shuffled around in alphabetical order. I'm stuck with that. Uh, that won't happen in the new version. Okay, so they transfer money from the firms and they pay it to the workers. And of course, once that's done, talking about the Wild West, they go off to the saloon to spend it. So there's consumption. And it isn't just the workers who consume, it's also the bankers. Now, this consumption by the bankers can be buying intermediate inputs to run a bank as well as going off and going to the local whorehouse. We are talking the 19th century and we are talking bankers. <laughs> okay. So there's going to be money taken out from the workers. I'll start with the workers first. Uh, and, work money, and, and that's going to be, and also money taken out of the safe. And that's going to be spent on the, the firms, both the, you know, the, the, the hotel and the whorehouse. Hopefully also maybe the local store, you never know. Okay, so that's going to be D plus E over here. So let's save that. Can you tell me that line again? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not sure whether the D and an E. Oh, the D, okay. D is the amount of money coming out of the workers' account and being paid for consumption. Out of their wallet. Okay. Pardon? Out of their wallet. Out of their wallet. They've got the notes being paid their wages, off they go to the saloon or the local store, and the bankers have got their interest payments, and off they go to the local whorehouse. Yeah. Uh, and those, those are some of the firms in this whole aggregation I'm calling the firm sector. So I've got to say what so D... D is, D is the bankers spending money. Yeah, D is the bankers... D, D is the workers spending money, and E is the bankers spending money, the way I put it into that, that model. I, could, I can use anything I like, by the way. I don't have to call it E or D. I could call that... Um, you know, I could say workers consume and bankers consume, but it makes the model easier to look at with a low-resolution screen. So now I've got to define th three new elements there, C, D and E. Well, C is the payment of wages. And I'm going to make wage payments proportional to the amount of money the firms have got in their firm's account. I'm going to define W later. Now, that's the next thing is workers' consumption. Like say, workers are going to consume at a rate proportional to the amount of money that's in their account any particular time. So we're going to call that WC, workers' consumption, and multiply that by what's in the workers' account at time t. And bankers, the same sort of thing. I'm going to say bankers' consumption is going to be BC, constant, multiplied by what's in the safe, which is where the part of the, part of the system they can spend from legitimately. So having done all that, I would now have to define what uh, W, give values to w, uh, W, C and B, C. So I'm going to make W4, I'll explain that choice later. Let's say W is going to be equal to 4. W, C, workers' consumption is going to be equal to 26. So I'm going to explain that in a second. And bankers' consumption are going to set equal to 1. Let's... I'll explain that in a moment as well. I've chosen those numbers. Let's just save it again. What these stand for is how often the particular social class turn over their accounts. If you think about workers, they get paid on a fortnight, they spend on a fortnight. That means they'll turn their accounts over about 26 times a year, hence I'm using 26 as a value there. Bankers who are wealthier, much more money, they can survive for a year without wiping out their bank account, so I use one is a rough idea for them. They're going to have a, a lower rate of consumption out of their accounts, even though they're spending, of course, more money than the workers because they're wealthier. So that's the use of those values. I'm using, uh, what I'd be properly using here is fractions of a year in what are called uh, time, uh, time constants, but that's a bit too complicated uh, in terms of the explanation to an audience who's not used to those um, dynamic approaches. But that's, that's, that's where the values come from. So it's saying workers turn their accounts over 26 times a year, Bankers turn their accounts over once, and the, the less rapidly you turn over the account, the wealthier you are. 
Hence the difference. That's how how, mu off how much the firm's account is turned over annual, uh, annually. How often that's turned over and paying wages out. But saying, and I'll go, I'll go into more detail about how you're going to choose a value like for. Um, but I can make it a smaller one. The system will still work, by the way. People often think that's not the case, but I'll I'll show that later. So I've now really got the the simplest, truly functional model. So I've got the bank lending money, charging interest on it, the firm paying firm sector paying interest on that debt with the money it got from the loan hiring workers, producing goods which is implicitly happening in the background, selling those goods to workers and bankers. Okay? No repayment of debt yet. So let's look at that model. Now they're all connected together, a bit messier. So there's recording the loan first of all, uh, there's recording the payment, there's compounding the debt. Over here for the firms, we have uh, consumption coming back to them from the other two social classes. They're paying interest over there and they're uh, paying wages to workers. Let's, let's whack this up here somewhere. And workers are consuming as well. So I'll just save that. Now let's see what happens with this model. Now notice last time when I didn't have workers being hired and then workers and bankers consuming that the amount of money in the account of the firms went negative, which is what people think necessarily has to happen because you're being charged interest, you can't repay it, you're only getting, you're getting let $100, you've got to pay 105 uh, that way lies hell. Watch what happens to the accounts. The vault will still run down to zero and the loans will still go to 100 because all the money gets lent out. But you'll notice the other two accounts start to stabilise, three accounts, pardon me. The amount of money in the firm's account is still going up. The amount of money the workers got is still rising. The, the safe is, of course, positive over here, but not, it's not going exponential as it did the last time round. The workers have got money in their accounts now. The firms have got money in their accounts too. They owe a, la a larger amount in debt than they actually have in cash. And I'll talk about that in more detail later. But their account will stabilise. They're managing to pay the interest. If you see the interest they're paying out here, that's showing the total amount they've paid so far. So they've got $81 in their account. They've paid $38 million so far in interest. How have they done that? Because you pay interest out of the circulation. Okay? And this is the confusion that makes people erroneously believe you can't repay whatever you get lent because they're confusing a stock with a flow. Now the stock... Is, is, and you can work this out by saying how do you do, what dimensions are applied to the variable you're looking at. When I say I'm going to lend you $100, what's the time dimension of the loan? The answer, there is none. I've given you $100, you owe me $100. Okay? So that is dimensioned by money alone. But then, of course, having given you the money, I now charge you interest. What's the time dimension of the interest? It's annual. I'm going to charge you 5% per year. So the payment of interest is dollars per year. So the first is a stock and the second is a flow. Now how do you pay that flow? Well you've got, you've got the money, you now have a certain amount of money in the economy, you then hire workers, produce output, sell the goods, you've therefore got a flow of profits being generated by that and the scale of the flow depends upon how productive your economy is, how rapidly you turn that money over. That's where the W comes in. I've generated a fairly productive economy here. But the outcome, as you can see, I've been talking for long enough to become obvious. The amount of the money in the account stabilises. The banks, are the, work, the firms are successfully paying the interest charge. They're not being sent bankrupt by doing it. But of course, they haven't got them paying loans back yet. So that's the, the final stage I need to go to to show the system is inherently sustainable, even when you have to repay the debt, which people, again, have thought is not possible. I think there's another assumption Well, ultimately, bankers don't, uh, bankers don't acquire the money to put it on the wall. They do try to accumulate as much as they can. And I haven't got them accumulating financial assets and speculating and gambling and all the stuff we know they do do. Nor do I have the bank, the capitalists, doing that. I haven't even separated capitalists out from the firm sector. I should really have a firm sector paying dividends to a capitalist class. Okay, and all that can be done quite easily. I'm just using... Well, I think it makes a big difference whether the bankers spend their interest earnings or, or lend them out. 
No, it does because you, you, if you say the bankers simply don't... Well, actually, let's do that. I'm going to... Let's just before, stop this. Before you go on to that... Yeah. Three things. Okay, first, yeah. This model, before I heard you call like a hydraulic model... Yeah. Because it's showing kind of like water in a municipal water system being pumped, but it's being pumped in a circuit. Yeah. And it doesn't come out of tap and go into the sewer and evaporate. Yeah, yeah. It's just being pumped around. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's why it looks like pumps and little basins. Yep. The basins are like glasses of water that are getting filled up. This is a tribute to Bill Phillips, because he actually, back in the 50s, tried to illustrate this sort of stuff to economists. He actually built two computer models of the economy, one a hydraulic computer and the other actual analog computer. Okay, way back, using resistors, um, valves back in those days to build a model you could actually tweak and see it all happen on screen. You still couldn't get through to the economists. Can you follow one Colorado dollar from the vault all the way through the circuit so you can just see how that dollar might travel? I can't actually uh, illustrate it no, in the software package, but you could. You could see it going through and continuing to circulate. And what, what people if forget... You go up on the stage Pardon? and show us how one dollar would... Oh, well, I'll, I'll start from here. The money will... Okay. Vault comes out of, the money, the dollar would come out of here, be lent down to the firm sector. The firm would then pay part of that as interest to the safe, but also use part of it to pay wages to the workers. The part paid by the wages of the workers would then be spent by the workers in consumption, which goes back to the firm. And the, the, banks, the banks don't make the teller machines. The firms do. The banks don't run the brothels. Well, maybe they do. Okay. But they've got to pay to the brothel, madam, first of all, etc., etc. So if they want to do anything, they have to ultimately consume it. What, if you, you're talking about a very important distinction, actually, Aaron. Uh, you're saying leakage out of the system like the money falls out into the, like water into the desert and evaporates. You have to have a sink in the system or a place where the money stops circulating to have it breaking down. Now, the, the fundamental thing about money is it circulates. If you have any other commodity, it ultimately wears out. <coughs> money, certainly now we're talking electronic money, well, never has to wear out, always circulates. So I'm talking about a circulatory system and not understanding that is where a lot of the errors come from including believing that the banks can't actually spend. Yep. Third point. So the third point is the bankers. Yeah. If the bankers in this model, if you change the model so that the bankers consume as little as possible, so they, yeah. just, they just consume food, for example, okay. and that causes the model to become more like the original model because now the firms aren't bringing in the money that they need, and Tom is, would be correct, if there was one person that just kept on taking in the money and never spent anything, that they would crash the system. I'm going to put 100 years as the length of time it takes the banks to turn over their accounts. And That's play it again. Pardon? They never turn over their accounts. Oh, well, they if, you, if they never spend it, it will turn up in the safe. Uh, I, know I certainly regard bankers as stupid, but not that stupid. No, it doesn't end up in the safe. It ends up back in the vault. And no, no, it doesn't. In this system, they have nothing left in the salt. They don't. I haven't actually included the feedback from the banks to pay the debt. Okay, the, to get back in the vault, loans have to be repaid, which I'm not showing yet. The system will still work. It will have different dynamics, different out, uh, final outcome level. Uh, in fact, what you can see, the safe is uh, growing very, very slowly. Actually, I've made it too fast. They're spending too quickly in that particular model. Went the wrong way. Should have made it close to zero, but. Let's just stop this for a second. Okay. What I want to now include is, I'll just change that constant back to the original value. I've got them turning over two, I made, they went the wrong direction over two, I made it uh, turning over uh, every, spending every uh, three days rather than every uh, hundred years as I meant to do there. Okay. Let's now add the next stage of saying they repay debt. So there's going to be a transfer in this case now from the firms to the vault. And having made that transfer,
the bank has to record the loan's gone down by that amount. Okay? Let's save this one. Now I have to define F again. And I'll go make F proportional, I'll call it uh, repay, the repay rate, given how much is currently outstanding in loans. And having done that, give it a value. And if I use the up and down key, I can actually type a fraction here. Make it 1 over 7. That actually translates to the banks repaying their loans over a seven year period. Save that. Come back over here. And shut these windows down. Generate the new diagram. Stuffed over here. And now what I've got coming back is the repayment. You can see it's being added in the system there. So as well as um, being given a loan, there's now a circuit occurring between here and the vault. Let's play that. And what you will now see, all the systems stabilise. The vault heads down as before, but rather than hitting zero, it tapers off when the rate of repayment equals the rate of new lending. And I can illustrate that. I'm just checking to see what the options are at the moment here. Let's see. Okay. Currently, the valves are showing the total amount that's passed through the system. So, so far, uh, the amount passed through has been 104, 107, 109 million. Okay. I should have the years being shown. I haven't actually done... Actually, you can see that's over a five-year period. So, they're turning over the amount of money in the account uh, about every four years. Now, if I show the rates of flow once it starts to stabilise, notice how the valves, the amount of money in the valves... Uh, is growing all the time. If I show the rates of flow, that's showing the annual flow through rather than the total amount over the whole number of years. And you see that's totally stabilising. And when you're getting out of it, I can now show you some income elements to the system. Because wages, with $100 million in the system, wages are working out at about $255 million a year. So the $100 million worth of loans is generating $250 million worth of loan income for the workers in the economy, which they're spending at the pub and probably some also at the brothel, but they save up enough. And the bankers are doing plenty of their spending as well. The bankers are being paid $3.9 million a year and they're consuming pretty much the same level. I haven't got any accumulation going on here. Now, I can include accumulation as well. So that's just simply saying that absolutely simplest system. Accumulation, uh, speculation, all this sort of stuff can be added later. It's just starting the simplest possible system because people's arguments about the sustainability begin from the simplest system. And so you, if you charge interest, you can't repay it without going bankrupt. Now, I'm showing a cam. And on that go, we'll go indefinitely. So let's stop that one there. Uh, I'm going to go to a more complicated model and I'll just load that before I... Uh, go on to the next part of the presentation. Pardon me. Let go here. So it's viable. Banks, the capitalists can borrow money, make a profit, repay the debt. I haven't shown you what their profit is yet. I'll do that in a moment. So I've worked out what wa wages are quite obvious. The flow of money out of the firm's account is the wage level. You can see the interest being earned by the bank as well. I'm not including the bank paying deposit interest, but they can do that as well and still come out with a net positive. That's easy to add, just waiting and paying deposit interest on the amount of the money in the firm's account and the worker's account. Uh, but profits are more complicated. And what it really comes down to is the economy is productive. It's generating a physical surplus. And that physical surplus goes in one of two directions. Either the workers get it as wages or the owners of the firms get it as profits. So that's the total sum of incomes as wages plus profits. Now, the wages share as said, represents the share they got of it, taking into account how rapidly the money turns over. So that W I used a moment ago is a compounding of two things. It's the share that workers are getting divided by how often in a year 
the amount of money to, the amount of money in the economy turns over. So I've currently got that total by being equal to the number four. Well, that could mean that workers are getting 75% of, of output and it turns over a, a bit more rapidly than once every uh, three months. And that would explain that value. Therefore, what capitalists are getting is one minus what the workers are getting in that share divided by the same ratio. So if I had workers getting 75% of total income out of the system, and that would come out in this model as you can see to, uh, let's just, okay. Oh, I should go back and load that model again a bit late. But they're getting, workers are getting about $255 million a year out of the system. Capitalist profit would be about $80 million a year, out of which they had to pay interest on the loan, which is a bit less than $100 million a year. So they'd be making something like about $75 million a year net profit. Bankers are making $5 million and workers are making $280 million in wages. So you get positive pro incomes for all classes. It doesn't have to break down. But obviously capitalism does. So what's going on there? Um, one thing Aaron asked me to add into the presentation here is something about the, the paradoxical nature of some of the behaviours that we think are sensible when we don't think in terms of the levels of feedback that I'm showing existing in that system. So one thing we often think is it'd be better if we save more. We often think improving saving is a good idea. Now, you're going to have to take my word for it because this is, a, this is showing exactly that same model with some, uh, some, ad, some additional sophistication in the flowchart software that engineers designed that I've used for many years. But the account dynamics are simply impossible to understand. This is the capitalist... Remember, by the way, when I showed you the QED model, if I bring up the uh, Godley table, this particular more complicated model, just looking in that bit there, I can explain all of that to you. I can say there's compounding of interest, there's servicing, there's recording the servicing, the, I've, got, I've got debt financed investment going on here, so you get more money in your account and your loan rises at the same amount. There's paying wages, interest being paid to firms on deposit accounts, ditto to workers. It's easy to explain that. You can follow the steps. If I try to explain this to you, I wouldn't want to. Okay? It's just too complicated to follow the dynamics. That's why the, the account paradigm I'm using is a, makes it possible for this software to be used by economists, uh, whereas this sort of stuff which engineers find useful, can't really be modelled effectively, can't be used effectively to model financial dynamics. But anyway, having, that's, a, that's an aside. But it is the same model as I've shown you there. And what I've now got in this model, um, be, because the software has features that I would like the other version to have, but it doesn't, I'm using this particular program to illustrate the same idea. And what I'm going to show here is, run the model first of all, and you, the top line is total income which is the sum of wages plus profits. It's not including interest, by the way. Interest is not part of net income. It's a transfer. So wages plus profits are total income in the economy. Now, the workers' consumption rate is shown over here as a variable. And I'm going to say, let's say what... Let's imagine workers think they want to save more money. OK? Sounds like a good idea. So they save more money. Look what happened to total income. It goes down. Let's say workers want to spend more money. Total income goes up. Okay. They're changing the rate of circulation of money in the system. What and that, that has... Mean for employment? Pardon? What does that mean for employment? It means, given that the, with the wage rate I've got here, employment would rise. If you increase the rate of turnover in a monetary system, you can in, which workers can do by spending more money more rapidly, that can actually cause employment to rise. There are different results come out of a dynamic way of thinking can come out of the static way that neoclassical economists have hammered into the population and themselves. And this is what Keynes tried to communicate in what he called the paradox of thrift. Okay. But this is now demonstrating it dynamically. I could do many more demonstrations than that. That's a, that's a reasonable one to show. If the rate of relending uh, decreases, take longer to repay the money. What form do the savings take? Pardon? What form do the savings take? Savings effectively are residual. It's simply saying you consume less rapidly. So rather than consuming, rather than spending your wages on a fortnightly basis, you try to save something out of your wages. So you try to consume on a monthly basis. You try to make two weeks' wages last four. Is that more stuff in the matrix 
No, it's in a bank account where you're earning interest and so on and spending it. Pardon? They, the, they, the banks don't control the savings or what you spend out of the savings. The, you're thinking in terms of the money of the um, reserve theory of how money is created, which is also false. I'll we'll have to talk about that later. I'm just saying, what does the bank do with the money that you deposit? They pay you interest on it. Yeah. And it's just it's there in the vault or not? No, it's not in the vault. It's in your account. Again, this is the 19th century system. They've got the money there and they're compounding it. They're recording it's there. They've got to put more money in because when they pay you, when you put a deposit in the bank, the bank says, we'll give you 3% interest. So the bank has to tr pay that interest out of the safe. Yeah, but the bank isn't just letting that money sit idle. They're using it for making loans over there. They're making loans out of the vault, not out of the safe, not out of the... They lend out, in this 19th century model, they lend out of the vault. They can't lend out of the deposits. Okay? I, I better move on from that point. But this, the, you get the paradox of thrift coming out of that. By trying to save more money, you actually slow the economy down. Pardon? How did he state the paradox of thrift? What does it say? What is the paradox of thrift? It says that attempting to save more money can lead to the level of e economic output declining and therefore your level of total savings falling. So if the president said that we all need to save more money, it would affect the... What that would cause is the economy to fall down, to, to re reduce output and end up with less savings. Hmm. And if the president said... You need to go out and spend. <laughs> then you could get more save, you get increase in output and more savings coming out of it. There are other, many, many other issues inside that in terms of whether the money leakage leaks off to China rather than being used locally, uh, whether it's used for investment and consumption, whether used to speculate on, which is a bad thing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, but if the feedbacks in a complex dynamic system, which is what capitalism is, um, make it impossible to have that simple linear logic. Let's save more money. Because if you save it, you're going to have feedback effects that you're not anticipating, which means stores get less, cu less customers coming through. So stores find they can't support the number of staff they have, so they sack a few workers, and those few workers can't save anymore because they haven't got any income, and off you go. And it's not thinking about those complex issues that where's a huge, huge amount of the errors we make in the economy come from. Yeah. You don't have a slider for productivity here yet, do you? No. Where you could actually move it down. Yeah, I could vary all that or change the level of productivity and so on. That could all be fed. Got another break for a moment here, guys. Well,